Last eight, and we have Dr. John in the studio from Creation Ministries International. Creation Ministries, of course, have their own website, creation.com, where you can go to get pretty much any question answered. Yeah, they've got like thousands or millions of answers to all sorts of questions. However, we'd like you to send your questions through to us right here because Dr. John can answer them. 0401 949 949 is the text line number. Just send a text with your questions. And Dr. John can answer them. Of course, we also talk about last week's news. And uh, there were some interesting headlines last week. Dr. John, one of them, the very first stars formed too fast for our cosmological models. New evidence shows, well, what do you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, the models don't work. Mm, absolutely. And another one that I thought you'd really like, um, a very famous man, atheist, one of the world's most famous atheists, a guy called Richard Dawkins. Well, he's admitted that without God, the world would be less moral. Um, he actually says, I hate that idea. I want to believe that humans are better than that. Well, what do you know? Yeah. Well, of course, you're absolutely right. Uh, Richard is probably uh, the world's best-known atheist, mm. uh, and he's an evolutionist, of course. And I think he was uh, the finance behind that sign that went on the London buses a year or two ago. You know, there's probably no God, so just relax and enjoy yourself. Mm. So, yeah, so he's, uh, he's a very, very well-known atheist. Well, it's and interesting he said relax, Dr John, because... He was also talking about, um, you know, this divine spy camera in the sky, reading every thought and, uh, you know, getting people a little jumpy and, <laughs> and concerned. So after that thing on the bus, that's interesting that he made the almost opposite comments. Well, that, that's right. And uh, this, is, uh, this is why the uh, evolutionists really do what they, they do. They want to get God out of the picture. And you might remember a couple of weeks ago, I, I spoke about the effect that evolutionary teaching has on our society. Now, Richard, in that article you were just talking about, he, he said, you know, if you get God out of society, people might do whatever they want, and that would be terrible. Yep, yep, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, his words are, give people a license to do really bad things. Yeah, well, that, that's right. And, uh, of course, although uh, evolution doesn't specifically say that there's no God, the atheists know that that really is what it means, you know. And uh, unfortunately, Christians who've been persuaded that uh, somehow God used evolution to create are really playing right into the atheists' hands because uh, they know that evolution means there is no God. Uh, they have no doubt about that. And there are two main reasons, really, why you can't combine the two. You can't combine creation and evolution in any way at all. First of all, I suppose, it's not what the Bible says. You know, the Bible talks about an original couple named Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Now, evolution doesn't accept that. But uh, the Bible clearly says that Adam was made from the dust of the earth and Eve was made from Adam's rib. Yes. You know? And it's not just uh, the Old Testament that says that. The Apostle Paul, in his letters, he says that as well. Now... Uh, that means that if you want to get rid of Adam and Eve, you've really got to throw out the New Testament as well mm. and all of our understanding of the New Testament because uh, uh, the Holy Spirit used the Apostle Paul to really explain the meaning of the Jesus event. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, other the other apostles uh, finally got the message. I mean, Peter on the day of Pentecost uh, said what it was all about. But it was left to Paul to explain really the nitty-gritty of what the gospel is all about. You know, I mean, we wouldn't uh, have the concept of justification by faith if Paul hadn't explained it. Mm. So, you know, if you want to say that uh, Paul is wrong about Adam and Eve, then he could be wrong about justification by faith as well. Mm. You know, you can't have it both ways. The... Uh, New Testament absolutely confirms the Old Testament and uh, you, you throw both out if you want to throw out the Old Testament stories about Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, Jesus, he, uh, he used to read through the Old Testament all the time and if he believed it, well... It really has to be right, doesn't it? If but God believes that word, yeah, it's got to be the I, I right word. I don't think word. there can be any argument about it. No. And the other thing that uh, the uh, Old Testament talks about, and Paul again repeats this, is uh, that death 
uh, is a consequence of Adam and Eve's sin. Now, you know, again, uh, you, it's uh, completely incompatible with evolution because mm-hmm. if we did evolve, that would mean it's that endless life and death cycle over millions and billions of years, you know, mm-hmm. and yet Paul says and uh, Genesis says that death only began with uh, Adam's sin. So evolution and, uh, and creation are absolutely mutually exclusive and uh, the, the gospel uh, uh, shows us that what Jesus came to do and who he was and that doesn't make any sense at all without an Adam and an Eve how do you explain you know what sin is I mean, we all experience sin. We might not call it that, but we all experience failure. Mm. And uh, we know, uh, if you're a Christian anyway, and you're a Bible believer, we know that that came from Adam and Eve's fall into sin and the consequences of that sin. Now, there's no way that you can explain the Jesus event if, uh, if you don't have Adam and Eve. Mm. You, you don't know who he was, what he cl- came to do. Uh, we, you don't really understand why he had to die. Mm. And you can't really understand the reason why he had to die at Passover. Mm. I mean, it, it's, it's all tied in with what the Old Testament says. You know, the, uh, the Passover meal for the Jews was a celebration or a remembrance of their deliverance from the power of bondage in Egypt. Yep. And Jesus' death for us was the deliverance from the power of bondage to sin. Yep. So, you know, if you don't have uh, Adam and Eve, you just can't understand the gospel in any way. And the atheists are well aware of that inconsistency. They can see it very easily, even if a lot of Christians can't, mm-hmm. you know. So really, I, I think uh, what, what a- evolution does is it, removes God from the equation. And uh, because evolutionary teaching pervades our whole school education, our whole university education uh, system, all the young people these days are effectively told that God doesn't exist. Mm. And they're told that the, uh, the book that claims to be his handbook for living is full of error. You know, so where do you go from there? It's uh, it's um, it's something that I think we really need to uh, to look at, because that's the situation Western society finds itself in now. All our children in the school system are taught that they came from nowhere, they're going nowhere, and they just have to face that as a fact. Well, and they're good in the meantime. Yeah, and the, and there are consequences of that belief. Absolutely. You are on 94.9 this morning. We're with Dr. John from Creation Ministries International. Please send your questions through to zero questions through to our text line 0401 949 949. Now, Dr. John, we're talking about, uh, well, you know, if there was no God, how morality would just fall out the window. And, of course, atheist Richard Dawkins has recently pointed that out, and he believes exactly the same thing, Um, and at the same time says there's no God. So, interesting, that man. He did a uh, a study, or he was working with a a lady who did a study at the University of Newcastle, I believe that was the English Newcastle, Um, and they they had a pair of eyes on uh, a bunch of signs coming in to a coffee bar where they said uh, pay as much as you like for your coffee whatever you think's right and when the eyes were actually watching people they ma- paid more than when they weren't watching and that's how he came up with uh, his conclusion because he believes that you know God is this pair of eyes in the sky that keeps us moral interesting yeah it is isn't it but uh, uh, and I think he's uh, he's absolutely right you know the uh, the concept of God does lead to uh, to moral behavior and when you look at uh, what we see around us in society today, we're seeing a whole lot of immoral behaviour. You know, not, not, I'm not just talking about sexual morality. I'm talking about things like glassings and road rage and shootings, you know, all of the, uh, yep. the other things that uh, are a consequence of um, people uh, not believing that they have any accountability to uh, any higher authority. Yep. But look, I, I think it really is uh, sad that uh, Western society is finding itself 
in the situation that we're in today. You know, all our children in the school system are taught that they came from nowhere and they're going nowhere. You know, there, there was nothing to start with and then there was something and that something became a, uh, a common ancestor with uh, chimpanzees and so really they're nothing more than a, uh, a highly evolved ape mm-hmm. and uh, there is absolutely nothing eternal or after this life to look forward to. Once you die, you die. This is what, uh, what children are taught. And of course, if you're uh, in a, uh, an unhappy or a poverty situation, how on earth are you going to get out of that? You know, what have you got to look forward to? And, uh, I mean, uh, you might win the lottery, but that's uh, pretty unlikely. Mm-hmm. So, really, you have absolutely no hope. And I pointed that out in uh, this session a couple of weeks ago. And in the news in the, uh, the last week, it was claimed that mental illness and uh, Uh, suicide and the lost productivity from all of the um, depression, mental illness, suicide and so on amounts to, in our society, Australian society, 180 billion. I mean, Mm. billion, not million. And uh, I think that was uh, an annual cost. Now, that's just astonishing, isn't it? Mm. You know, and uh, really, uh, how can society afford... To, uh, to have that sort of cost. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know where they got those uh, figures from, but it's a, uh, it's a staggering amount. Yeah. And, of course, there was a solution proposed and supposedly, uh, you know, all you can do is uh, throw more money at the problem and provide more school counsellors and all the other remedies that the, uh, the secular world can come up with. Now, of course, uh, the problem does need addressing. And, of course, it does need more financial resources. But uh, uh, what about uh, thinking about what is the, uh, the actual cause? Because throwing more money at something is going to be a, a futile exercise yeah. if you haven't identified the cause. I mean, if you're trying to uh, patch up the holes in a, uh, a leaky bucket, and somebody's sniper is up there shooting holes in the bucket, you've got to do something about the sniper that's shooting the holes in the bucket. Yes. Otherwise, you're never going to solve the problem. Absolutely. Don't keep patching the holes in the bucket. I agree. We're with Dr John from Creation Ministries International. It is 25 minutes past eight, and uh, we're answering your questions. Send them through to the text line 0401. Who's been talking to us about, uh, well, Christianity, morality, and uh, having no Christianity and no morals. Interestingly, in the news last week, uh, and it wasn't just in one publication either, it was in Breaking Christian News, Faith Wire, Premier, even CBN News, uh, Christian News Headlines, uh, it was all over the place. Uh, they were talking about Richard Dawkins, who admitted that without God, the world would be less moral. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, an interesting talk this morning, Dr. John. Yes, and, and uh, as you mentioned before, he, uh, he said how he'd like to believe that uh, he's honest even when there's nobody up there watching him. <laughs> yes, yes, that was one of the things he said. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll find the words. and oh, Here we go. I'd like to believe that I'm honest whether anyone is watching or not. He'd like to believe. I find that interesting. <laughs> well, well it, it is interesting. And, of course, uh, if you're an evolutionist and um, your evolutionary success uh, depends on you being dishonest, mm. then, then why would you like to believe you are honest? Mm. And, uh, I mean, poor old Richard, he's, uh, he's saying a lot of things that really would convince the world that uh, he believes that there is a God and yet, you know, he certainly doesn't. He's one of the better known atheists and evolutionists. Interesting how he came out with this, by the way. So the week after you started talking about maybe he was listening to you, Dr. Well, perhaps he was. (laughs) It'd be nice to to have a bit of a a chat with Richard. But look, he and uh, his, you know, fairly um, a a minority of... uh, people, atheists, I would have imagined, um, they were really responsible for getting 
any uh, thought of, uh, of uh, creation or anything, any thought of God out of schools. You know, they have been the vocal minority that has been pushing. And, and if you suggested, uh, how about we uh, introduce creation into schools, then they would have a fit, you know. Mm. And yet there's Richard saying that uh, uh, the society wouldn't be very good if uh, God were out of it. Yeah, you interesting, know? isn't it? I mean, yeah. it really is uh, amazing. And, uh, the, of course, the atheists have been very, very successful in getting rid of uh, all suggestion of the supernatural or God or anything out of schools so that uh, school children are, are brought up uh, with that, uh, that belief. And it really is amazing, you know, the, uh, the power of vocal minorities. Mm. I mean, we've seen it recently, haven't we, with the, uh, the protests about uh, climate change. Mm. Uh, sure, th- uh, those people may have a point, but they really are a vocal minority and what they're trying to do is force their opinion on society, just like the atheists have forced their opinion on society as well. And uh, another thing that uh, came to me in the news about uh, vocal minorities is um, the uh, issue of uh, medical marijuana. Mm. You know, that, that's been uh, something that uh, a very, very vocal minority have been pushing for. And uh, I, I think uh, it really is sad that these vocal minorities can absolutely force society to do what they, uh, they want rather than what society believes is uh, probably right and proper. Mm. And, uh, I mean, I know that uh, there have been some examples of uh, people with, say, intractable uh, fits or, or severe um, untreatable pain who've had some benefits from uh, so-called uh, medical marijuana. But the bad effects vastly outnumber the good. And there was an interesting article in the, uh, uh, the Lancet uh, Journal, you know, mm-hmm. the psychiatry section only uh, last week, noting that there's no benefit and generally uh, harm with uh, any of the cannabinoids, that's the active ingredients in uh, marijuana, being used to treat depression and mental illness. Mm. But you see, when you get this push from the vocal minorities, it's it's put out as a panacea for just about everything. Mm. And yet it really does terrible harm. And uh, uh, most of the uh, reputable journals, like uh, the Lancet, and that's probably the most prestigious medical journal in the world, you know, they don't uh, really get uh, too much of a say. And it's uh, uh, the push for marijuana throughout the world is very, very strong. Yeah. In Canada, they have absolutely legalised it. You can do whatever you want. You can uh, grow it. You can smoke it. You can deal it. You can do whatever you want with it. And it's very likely that uh, Australia will uh, will follow. Mm. And yet the damage that that stuff does is really horrendous. Mm-hmm. You know, the, uh, the most active ingredient in it is uh, THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, and that really does terrible things uh, to uh, people's mental state. Mm. Uh, there are some, like uh, uh, some of the more minor cannabinoids, like can- cannabidiol, which <laughs> is the one that has been used for uh, medicinal marijuana. But you just can't make it. Um, uh, you just can't make it with that purity that you can get rid of all the, the harmful effects. But it's being pushed upon us and uh, we're likely to have to accept it in Australia in the not-too-distant future. Mm. But, you know, how do we overcome the, uh, the problems that uh, school children in particular are facing with this evolutionary push? Because that's what they're getting all the time. Yeah. And uh, I think the, the only uh, thing that we can do is to get across to the youth that they are not highly evolved apes. You know, they are human beings made in the image of God. Yeah. Now, uh, it's pretty hard, you know, it would be pretty hard to get that message across to the uh, secular world, but you would think that uh, within the church we could because, I mean, that's what the Christian church believes. You know, we are not highly evolved apes. We are made in the uh, image of God. And... Uh, what the church really needs to do is to 
make use of organisations like uh, Creation Ministries to try and counter the falsehoods that are being uh, proclaimed uh, in the uh, the scientific press and the media on the uh, the news uh, the programs like David Attenborough and uh, and uh, Professor Brian Cox and so on and uh, we've had a look at that evidence and we find that evidence is wanting yeah absolutely you're on 94.9 this morning. I was actually talking to Jimbo about it the other day, Dr. John, and uh, he said that uh, his boy asked uh, Jess whether or not, or, you know, where, where he came from, you know, where, where people came from, and she said, well, we have evolved from apes. And then he asked Richard Dawkins, uh, yeah, one of the world's most famous atheists, uh, who has said God informs morality, ending religion would be a bad idea. Well, he's, he's, he's absolutely right. And, of course, one of the things that we're at pains to do with uh, Creation Ministries is to show that the atheists, despite their claims, they do not have the evidence to support evolution that they th think they have. Mm -hmm. And that's what we, uh, we do all the time at uh, Creation Ministries. We try to point out, particularly to Christian people, that... Uh, that what the, uh, the, the Bible says is absolutely consistent with the evidence that we observe. And, I mean, we know that the, uh, the Bible is not a history textbook and it's not a, uh, a science textbook, but wherever it touches on those things, it is absolutely true. I mean, uh, his, the biblical history is constantly being verified by discoveries in archaeology, for example. And... Uh, even where the Bible touches on science, that science is accurate. Mm. And uh, I thought I would encourage the listeners this morning just by mentioning a couple of examples what, that the Bible got right that the world would not have known anything about. And uh, if you go back to the book of Job, now Job is one of the oldest books in the Bible and it's believed that Job himself probably lived about 4,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. And as we know, uh, Job, the book of Job has conversations between God and Job and Job's mates and Job and so on. But in chapter 36, it talks about the hydrological cycle, about the uh, evaporation and uh, forming the clouds and then the clouds dropping down with rain and, and so on, a hydrological cycle that simply was not known 4,000 years ago, but yep. the Bible got it right. And then... If you go to uh, the, the book of Proverbs in chapter 6, uh, Proverbs is there talking about uh, people being diligent and not being lazy. And uh, it says, uh, uses as an example, the ant. And uh, Proverbs says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. She's not organised by anybody, but she's very, very diligent in getting all the uh, food in for the, the summer and all of that sort of stuff. Now, what did the Bible say? It said, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Mm -hmm. Now, we know now that worker ants and worker bees are female, mm. right? But Proverbs was written 3,000 years ago. Yep. Now, how did they know that then? Yep. But they got it right. Yep. And that's because the, uh, the biblical books have really got the, uh, the Holy Spirit as their author. Well, even and Genesis talks about God spreading out the stars, and now they're talking that, about how the stars are spreading out because... That, Finally, we can see it. That, that's right. And this is why we're so keen to get to speak in churches, because Christians, by and large, are not aware that their Bible is so trustworthy in everything that it says. I mean, yes, we, uh, we believe the Bible, but it's nice to have it underlined that, look, everything it says actually backs up uh, with the, uh, the scientific evidence. And uh, uh, the people are a bit unsure of the grounds they stand on because they've been browbeaten by the world and the media about long ages and evolution. But uh, uh, what that's claiming really is that the Bible's not true because all Christians are pretty well aware that the Bible doesn't say what people like Brian Cox and Richard Dawkins and so on are saying. Mm. So, uh, but what we are at pains to point out is that these guys are actually just giving their opinion. Mm. 
-hmm. It's not that the evidence shows that uh, what they're saying must be true. The evidence, evidence doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. All evidence, no matter what it is, has to be interpreted. And you interpret evidence within the framework generally of what you already believe. So they already believe evolution and long ages. So every bit of evidence that then is discovered gets fitted in, maybe even shoehorned in to that belief system, uh, whether it fits or not. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a belief system as well. We believe the Bible is true. So we fit the evidence into the Bible. But you see, both of those positions are actually religious positions. Yeah. They're both faith positions. Mm -hmm. The evolutionists put their faith in uh, what they already believe, the long ages and evolution. They're not putting their faith in the evidence, they're fitting the evidence into their belief structure. I think there's a lot of other people out there too that not so much faith is people that want to believe that because, you know, their sexual morality isn't uh, working out so well, they've got issues, you know, like they, they think, oh yeah, look, divorce is a good thing, I'll just go and jump on that. Um, some people think, you know, I, I, I'm happy when somebody gives me the wrong change and I get too much, I'll only scream if I get too little. Um, it, it, it fits with their comfort cycle. And so when these guys come out with their own theories, people go, oh yeah, that fits with me because I don't want to have to fit with that biblical doing the right thing um, or else all of a sudden I'm guilty. Well, that's, that's true. And uh, uh, the whole idea, the reason why... Uh, evolutionary belief got off the ground in the first place is people wanted to believe that they wanted to believe that there was no God to whom they uh, they uh, would be accountable and really I think we've uh, we've got to uh, look at um, what the uh, material world is actually saying they're saying that there is no room for the spiritual or the supernatural mm -hmm. and yet they are confronted with it on a daily basis. I mean, we all are. Uh, let, let's think about the encounters that we all have, you know, that we call uh, coincidence or small world or whatever. Now, we all have them and we all have dozens of them, every one of us. And yet the, uh, the odds against those things happening is absolutely astronomical. So it is clear evidence that there is a spiritual dimension. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Dr. John. We did get a question come through just a little bit ago. Interesting session this morning. What evidence and how do you present it to a seven-year-old that we created, not evolved from monkeys? Well, you partially answered that then, but uh, avoiding the conflict, teacher said, parent said. And uh, that may be an answer for uh, next week that we can uh, put forward. Yeah, OK, look, it's, uh, it's a good question and uh, one that we can address next week and uh, we'll see what we can uh, come up with. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Dr John. Another awesome session. That was jo Dr John from Creation Ministries International. Of course, they have a website, creation.com, with literally thousands and thousands of pages of information.